This is what airplane simulators look like, and this is what skydiving simulators look like. It's called a vertical wind tunnel, and while I haven't been looking, they've been building these things all over the place. 27 by my count. This is the newest one in Brandon, Florida. I haven't crossed the door jam of a twin otter for six months, so on Sunday I joined James in the coal in the tunnel to knock off half a year of rust. My first ride in the tunnel was 15 years ago, and this one in Orlando. To say they hadn't figured out the aerodynamics then is a cruel joke. The old tunnels were open circuit, meaning that they drew outside air from the bottom and exhausted it out the top. That meant when it was windy, big bubbles of air would get sucked in. It was like flying in marbles. When it rained hard, we got really clammy. But this one, this one is the S-Class of tunnels. For one thing, it's recirculating, so it's independent of outside weather, including temperature. It's got big ventilation fans in the roof that force air through a plenum and up through turn vanes, then into the flight chamber. It's way quieter than the old tunnels, and the air inside is absolutely laminar. No marbles. And flow and pressure are so consistent you can climb almost to the top. At the swipe of a finger, the operator can control the speed and bump it up or down to order. We were flying at about 72% power or 112 miles per hour. For little kids, they slow it down to keep from plastering them to the exhaust grate. Kids are always good at flying because they have no expectations. Adults, on the other hand, seem to have this vacant grimace. Like, what the hell am I doing in here? The tunnel rats work really hard to control them and keep them off the walls. Hats off to them. For skydivers, tunnels offer the opportunity to refresh all the basic techniques you spent all that money on coaches learning but routinely blow off in freefall. Like good basic body position, which always seems to elude me. This is an exercise called a box drill meant to practice forward and backward movement and side slides. It's not so much moving in the right direction as it is stopping crisply. This is what a professional team doing 700 jumps a year looks like. I try not to look at too much of this stuff. It's depressing. The finer points of four-way skydiving are definitely perishable, like a good center point turn with a clean stop and maintaining level in the formation. Note that Nicole is wearing a weight belt to balance our freefall speeds, but the vernier adjustments happen with subtle body movement, and it has to be almost autonomic, and that's why we practice. It's cheaper in the tunnel than jumping. 15 minutes, basically the equivalent of 15 skydives really, costs about 100 bucks. The skydives would cost four times as much. After a long layoff, I find the tunnel physically demanding. I was winded after each session on Sunday, but on the next tunnel camp, I won't feel that. I guess it has to do with a self-reminder to relax. The tunnel itself is really customer-centric. There's little team room for skydivers, including creepers, and everything is digitized to the point that you can sign in at electronic kiosks and even download your own video. Very slick. It just makes for a much better experience. And even though I always feel like I suck going into the tunnel, I usually suck a little less when I come out.